Hi, welcome to the first video in the Java programming tutorial. Uh, in this video, we're going to discuss what is Java, um, how does it work, and answer the question as to whether is Java an object-oriented programming language, a pure object-oriented programming language. So, what is Java? So, Java is a higher-level programming language. Um, so, um, what that means is it's written in a way you write Java um, programs in a language that's easy enough for humans to understand. Um, you can set variables, you can create types, you can do all kinds of stuff um, to make art, to make software development easier um, for us. So in contrast to say um, assembly, which is a little bit tough to, you can write programs in assembly, but it's, it's not as easy to develop in. Um, and it's even easier, or uh, it's even better than writing indirect machine code, which is binary, um, or machine language, uh, which is binary and platform dependent. Um, so, so it's a high level, higher level language. Uh, it runs on top of the JVM. So the Java virtual machine. So the JVM um, is just an application that's written in C that runs on top of your computer's operating system. So think of it just like you would when you click uh, to open up Google Chrome. The JVM is, is simply uh, an application that runs on your computer. Um, so applications then that are compiled um, Get uh, uh, generate um, what's called Java bytecode, and the Java virtual machine interprets that code, and then runs it on the virtual machine. As an so, you can think of the JVM as an abstraction layer, um, above your uh, computer. So before Java, um, it, when you know you had to, when you wanted to write a piece of code, you wrote it for that specific computer's architecture. Um, so if you wrote a program in C, you would have to compile that application on Linux, uh, on Windows, and on any other uh, operating system um, that you would want to run your application on. So um, then Java came along. So the Java developers at Sun Microsystems said, all right, this is a very cumbersome way to do things. Um, it's extremely hard to develop applications this way. So let's, instead of requiring developers to compile on each operating system that they want, or ar uh, architecture that they want their program to run on, let's provide them a unified architecture that, uh, a unified uh, architecture and a language that goes with it that will allow them to write a program run, write a program once and run it anywhere. So that's where the term write once, run anywhere comes from. So what this allows us to do is we write a Java program in, uh, in you know, a simple Java program and we compile it once and then we can send that program anywhere uh, to any computer as long as that computer has the Java Virtual Machine installed on it, we can run that application. Um, and the versions of the Java Virtual Machine and the compiled version of your application have to match. So that's the only caveat there. But for all, in, for all, for most purposes, it it any application will work. So the the caveat to this is that the JVM is a platform dependent application. So what that means is, so let's underline that. What that means is that the JVM has to be compiled and built on each app, on each operating system that it wants to uh, run on. So what we'll see later is when, uh, when you go to the Oracle website to download 
uh, the JVM, they give you three options. They give, or a, a bunch of options, but they give you one for Linux, one for Windows, and one for uh, Mac OS. Um, so that way they compiled a, a copy of their virtual machine for each architecture, and then your Java applications run on top of that, that virtual machine. Okay, so, 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 uh, so that's what Java is. Um, now, how does it work? Um, I, I touched on this briefly, but when you write an application, the Java compiler interprets your code and not interprets, but it reads your code, resolves some dependencies, allocates memory and, or determines memory allocation routines. Um, and it compiles all of this in, down into Java bytecode, which is you can loosely think of as instructions that the Java virtual machine can understand. Um, it's not the same as machine code necessarily. Um, it's just a custom sort of bytecode that the JVM uses, uh, that the JVM understands. Okay. Um, and so, um, we're, so the next question we want to ask ourselves is, so Java has this concept of classes inside of it. Um, and classes kind of go hand in hand with um, object-oriented programming. So, did programming. And it's OOP for short. So, OOP. Now, Java is not necessarily a pure object-oriented programming language. Um, in, in a pure object-oriented programming language, all types are objects. So pure OOP, oops, oops, OOP, uh, all types are objects. All right, so that's important. Um, but in Java, it actually supports built-in primitive types. So, so uh, Java supports primitive types. So an example of a primitive type would be an integer, um, which is 32 bits of memory or four bytes um, and so with because of that short little caveat right there um, Java isn't pure OOP while it does support a lot of uh, very strong coupling to OOP so um, so with that we're gonna I'm gonna show a few examples of you know what it looks like to write Java code um, and we're just run, going to run a very quick Java program. So here we are in IntelliJ, which is an extremely useful integrated development environment for developing uh, small and large Java applications. Um, and I just have a simple class here um, called Hello World. And what we're just going to do is we're just going to print Hello World to the console. Um, uh, and I'm not going to... Uh, ask you, I'm, you're, I'm not expecting you to understand anything that's going on right now, and we'll explain this going forward. But um, so, um, so yeah, so this piece of code, all it does is it prints hello world, this string object to the uh, string literal to the console. Um, so if we run this. compiling and there we have it so it printed hello world to the screen and it just that's all it was going to do so it printed this really simple phrase to the screen um, but a lot happened under the hood uh, and in future videos we'll go into what exactly happened there so if you like the video please feel free to like and subscribe uh, to get notifications on the next part um, and until next time all right bye